ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about something. Hunter Biden indicted on gun charges facing 10 years in prison if convicted. Let's take a look. Well, uh, it was highly anticipated and now it has happened. Uh, the federal government has just filed an indictment against Hunter Biden on that gun charge. Our justice correspondent David Spunt has got the latest from the DOJ. David? We have three counts in this indictment. This is related to uh, the purchase of that gun. Remember back in 2018, uh, we've been reporting on it for several years. Hunter Biden uh, made a false statement. This indictment alleges made several false statements. He said that he was not addicted to drugs. The maximum penalty would be 10 years of imprisonment uh, for count one, which is a false statement. So let me go ahead and read through this, but just to kind of summarize things. I think there is nothing funnier, and I, I tweeted about this earlier today. There is nothing funnier to me than the Republicans championing jailing Hunter Biden, and the only tangible prosecutable acts they have on him are gun charges and tax evasion, which is things Republicans absolutely adore and things Republicans think should be legal and permissible. Okay, they love doing that shit. That... The trifecta is quite literally gun charges, okay, being able to exercise your Second Amendment to its fullest uh, extent, not paying taxes, and last but not least, drunk driving. But drunk driving is more of a universal principle for Americans in general, so I will say not paying child support. Not paying child support is the third best favored Republican practice. So the fact that this is what they are frustrated or, or this is what they're supposed to like gear up against Hunter Biden on is pretty awesome. It's pretty funny. This is only relating to Hunter Biden making false statements on a federal gun form that he was not addicted to narcotics uh, when he had in his possession in Delaware a gun for just over a week back in 2018. John Sander, this is not related to the uh, tax cases involving Hunter Biden or any other potential charges. Uh, the special counsel said those uh, charges relating to uh, his taxes or lack thereof paying taxes could be brought in another district outside of Delaware. Like, how are you a Republican? How are you a Republican watching Fox News right now and going, yeah, this is fucking awesome. I'm glad that they're throwing the book at this piece of shit. And it's like, they're literally talking about hitting him for 10 years on literally gun charges, making Chapter. false statements to, to get a gun. What are they saying? He needs to be in prison for 100 years along with his dad and family, bunch of corrupt scumbags. He needs to be held accountable for every criminal act he's pulled off, not just the gun charge. Now get the rest of the family off for the corruption not on drugs bullshit took long enough seriously still this is nothing compared to everything that he has done he needs to have charges about taxes and more what is the prison sentence for accepting bribes from enemy countries money laundering and income tax evasion as vp and potus oh shit how deep does the well go chat we did not understand that it turns out Burdock no bummer also was involved in the hunter biden scheme maybe they were also having gay sex while doing crack cocaine things that both barack obama and hunter biden enjoy doing maybe not in that order maybe in the reverse order but still think about that uh, hunter biden knew and, and that he was an unlawful user and addicted to a stimulant narcotic drug and then did knowingly possess that firearm and specifically it mentions the firearm as a colt cobra a 38 spl revolver it gives the serial number Hunter Biden's attorneys say that this is an active diversion agreement, but clearly uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office not buying that. Special Counsel David Weiss indicting the son of the President of the United States in his home state of Delaware. Wait, hold up. Isn't he a private citizen? Why is Fox News covering this? Come on. This is a criminal trial for the son of the current president of the United States of America. Of course they're going to cover this. This is a big fucking deal. That much is totally fair. I, I do agree with this. I do agree with the coverage of this uh, news story. It is a big deal. It's just that um, it's not, I guess, as big a deal as the Republicans want it to be. We're going to get to Jonathan Turley now, George Washington University law professor and a Fox News contributor. Jonathan, My what do you fave. make of all this? Well, this falls under the category of you have to be careful what you ask for because the deal that they struck originally just didn't pass muster with the federal judge. It puts the president in a tough position on a number of levels. First, this is a law that the president supported. 
in his why does that put him in a tough uh position i think he should do what he's done thus far which is demand that justice be served that hunter biden is not like above the law and that uh if he is found guilty in a court of law that he will serve his time and then of course in the lame duck session if he doesn't get reelected, he just pardons him but like you know what i mean he has enough political instincts to know that it would be disastrous if he said anything but throw the book at him jack it's the mac attack you know what i mean he's gonna have to try to uh, challenge it as much as possible uh, second one of the most obvious challenges that can be brought would be to challenge the constitutionality of the underlying law to challenge the law his father has supported but to do so he will have to cite cases that his father has denounced from the Supreme Court, cases that expanded the Second Amendment right afforded to individuals. Yeah, except... Again, he's not the president. He's a totally different person. I don't know why people can't fucking comprehend this. Like, not only is he not the president and an entirely separate human being, he's a very famous fuck up. I can't believe it feels like I'm defending Joe Brandon here. But like, not only is he not the president, that he is a very famous public fuck up that uh, his, his father, the president, has regularly just been like, yeah, it's just you know, do the thing. Do the thing, Justice Department. You got to do what you got to do. Like, there hasn't been a, a incredible amount of support towards Hunter Biden publicly throughout this entire process. So, like, because everyone is hyper-focusing on what Joe might do. And it's like, yeah, what, what, what's going to happen? When's the, what's the angle here? If Biden comes out and says, yeah, he's my son, but prosecute him to the fullest extent of the law, what's GOP's next angle? No Biden family loyalty? He has said that already. Joe Biden, when asked about the Hunter Biden thing, and which, of course, they're going to ask him about that, that's like, you know, a top of mind issue like the top of the hour ad break is, right? Yeah, this is what I was going to say. I feel like this is not going to be exciting enough for the Republicans who think that like Hunter Biden has been doing sex crimes and like, you know, doing it alongside Joe Biden or whatever. Because like they cooked them way too fucking hard for years and years. Like how I cooked you so hard at the top of the hour that some of you are coping and give me a three out of ten. You know what I mean? You're coping. Because for the past like what, two, three years now that they've been talking about the laptop from hell and how Hunter Hunter Biden is doing child sex trafficking and all this like insane shit. It's going to feel shitty. It's going to look like a hollow victory if the only thing you have is one, no connection to the big guy, Joe Brandon, and two, the charges that you're even bringing upon the little uh, guy, Hunter, is just a gun charge and tax evasion. Like, there's no shot. If your expectation is that, like, justice is supposed to be served and this guy's supposed to be hung for treason after a fucking trial where he's met with a jury of his peers and they say, Hunter, you have, uh, you know, denied uh, America is, is uh, you, you have betrayed America by working with his foreign adversaries and blah, blah, blah. It's like, what the fuck? He's maybe going to jail for, like, a gun charge? That sucks. Congressional Republicans who made Hunter Biden one of their top targets signaled they are not satisfied with the new indictment brought against him. Hunter Biden was indicted Thursday by special counsel David Weiss on felony gun charges. I mean, I'll admit, getting him on gun charges is a perfect bind for the Democrats because no Democrat's going to go out to bat to defend Hunter Biden and be like, actually, they should lower his uh, charges. Like, if the uh, federal district decides to throw the book at him, there's not going to be a tremendous amount of public support for him because you're Democrats. Like, Democrats love gun charges. You know what I mean? They want to do this to every single American, right? Technically. So it's, it's not going to be a good idea. It's not going to be good. Uh, no one is going to stick their neck out to defend Hunter Biden like that. The plea deal fell apart, obviously. The agreement would have allowed Hunter Biden to plead guilty to a pair of misdemeanor tax offenses and avoid prosecution on a felony gun charge by entering into a pretrial diversion program. Ironically, that's the one crime you can't tie, tie Joe Biden into, said the rep, uh, Representative James Comer, chairman of the House Oversight Committee. Justice Department's sweetheart plea deal fell apart after a federal judge refused to rubber stamp it. Mountains of evidence reveals that Hunter Biden likely committed several felonies, and Americans expect the Justice Department to apply the law equally. Today's charges are very very small start, but the U.S. unless the U.S. Attorney Weiss investigates everyone involved in fraud schemes and influence peddling, it will be clear Biden's DOJ is protecting Hunter Biden and the big guy. Comer said Republicans are looking for indictments related to money laundering, violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act, and tax evasion, and the list goes on. For the record, this one is not even fake. I Maybe even this part is uh, real. I, I don't know. But I get why they would want to hit him on uh, a violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act, except I don't know if he actually was able to successfully or even unsuccessfully attempt to lobby the government. They are trying to say that he tried to attempt and and 
uh, successfully, as a matter of fact, lobby his father, but that part they don't have any evidence for. But I don't know. Maybe he tried to lobby other people in Washington, D.C. when he was working for Burisma or whatever the fucking Chinese emissary wanted out of him. Is influence peddling a crime? Influence peddling is not a crime, which is why there is no influence peddling here as a, as a crime. It should be, but it's not. That's why he's not saying that he should go to jail for influence peddling. He's saying you should go to jail for foreign agents, uh, for violating the foreign agent registry act like Paul Manafort did like pretty much every single lobbyist does by the way like this is such a commonplace thing this is such an incredibly common thing that people routinely violate for the record like it is if you are lobbying the government in any way or have lobbied the government in any way and you have worked for a foreign corporation you probably did it without uh without uh, registering yourself as a foreign agent i don't even know what kind of limitations that would offer you i don't know why many people just don't do it and this is like this is a bipartisan thing by the way this is not just paul manafort because if you remember paul manafort's business partner was uh what's his face the benghazi guy's brother or the benghazi guy fuck what was it the one who was in the in the emails podesta tony podesta tony podesta Podesta also was working alongside uh, Paul Manafort and was hit with the same fucking Foreign Agents Registration Act violation. So that part might be viable. That part might be sticky, but it's, again, not sexy. And also, for this to stick, personally, they also have to show that Hunter Biden even attempted to do what he was tasked with doing, which is lobbying the american government it would be really funny if this fucking crackhead literally just lied to burisma got a fuck ton of money and never even tried to lobby the american government on their behalf which would make this whole thing hilarious because then he doesn't even need to fucking register as a foreign agent he just literally got the money and didn't do shit with it in this circumstance him being a grifter and conning burisma would be to his benefit a fun thing to consider here anyway let's keep uh watching what uh fox news is saying about the situation here, and i think uh, joe biden was already asked that question or if he wasn't asked it directly corinne jean pierre was asked why the president would support a diversion agreement when he has supported the idea of penalties for people who lie on uh purchase applications let, let me come back to what i was talking uh jonathan that opens up a civil lawsuit though what? No, it doesn't. What are you talking about? What, is Burisma going to sue Hunter Biden for not fucking pr uh, lobbying his dad on their beha behalf? Like, what are you, crazy? The party that is harmed in this situation is the is the dumbass uh, company that hired Hunter Biden thinking that Hunter Biden had any pull in the American government and wasn't simply a crackhead with the last name Biden, okay? There is no civil lawsuit angle there at all. They're like, the Republicans in Congress are not running the Ukrainian Better Business Bureau, okay? They're not going to fucking, they're not going to be able to successfully defend the interests of a corrupt energy company in Ukraine by the name of Burisma. With David Spunt uh, about a moment ago, and that is a potential presidential pardon here for the presidential son. If, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he can issue a preemptive pardon, can he not? He can. The, the president was not intending to run for re-election. He could pardon his son and admit that this was an abuse of the pardon power and to say that his penalty will be to be a one-term president. Uh, the pardon power has been abused historically by presidents to assist friends and family members. That included Bill Clinton, who pardoned his half-brother. I love Turley talking about notorious pardons from presidents, which he's not wrong about. And then only talking about Bill Clinton. Hmm. I wonder if there were any other presidents, uh, not even just Trump or Bush, but like very famous Republican administrations that have engaged in pardons that were completely fucking ridiculous. I wonder. Like, it's just, he made it seem like it was just fucking Bill Clinton. That's so funny. He said, quote, is there any possibility that the president would end up pardoning his son? To which Queen Jean-Pierre responded, no, flatly and firmly. Yes, and keep in mind, this, <laughs> he may have to wait because this may not be the last indictment of his son. Mm. Uh, there's still uh, torpedoes in the water for, for Hunter Biden. Uh, the most obvious is a FARA violation. And, you know, that's being an unregistered foreign agent. Many of us have been mystified as to how the Department of Justice has been able to rationalize uh, not bringing a charge against Hunter 
when they brought uh, the charge rather liberal. I love that there's like nothing happening yet. This is like when people get mad at me for a hypothetical situation where they fantasized about what my take is on a particular matter and gotten mad about it in the chat. You know, when like someone comes in here and they're like, oh, I bet you fucking hate that Hunter Biden is going to jail, right? You fucking idiot. And it's like, I never said that. What the fuck are you, what are you doing? Where like they bring in legal analyst Jonathan Turley, who's been chirping about the Trump indictments endlessly, okay, nonstop to just make stuff up and then potentially fantasize uh, and, and, and get mad at the fantasy. It's so funny. And it's just like, yeah, well, he hasn't done anything yet, but what if he did a preemptive pardon? It's like, bro, he just got indicted. <laughs> Like, not only did he just get indicted, like, we don't even know how it's going to pan out for him. But also on top of that, there's no indication that Joe Biden is going to abuse his uh, uh, power at all, specifically because he has said the exact opposite so far. That he is not, you know, he doesn't interfere with the Justice Department's affairs. It's a totally separate entity. He cares about the integrity of the justice system and that, you know, let justice take its course. Does that make sense? Really against Trump uh, associates like Paul Manafort. Uh, there are also tax issues here that could still be potentially litigated, although the statute of limitations was allowed to run on the most serious counts. So if the president's going to give a pardon, you might have to wait because it yeah. may require heavier lifting than just these three counts. Conservatives just accustomed to abusing power. They're projecting their penchant for power abuses. Democrats is hilarious. I mean, it's pretty funny because like Joe Brandon's entire thing is that he is not, he's like the Teflon Don, the real Teflon Don in the sense that like he's not unshakable. Like, Trump was a Teflon Don because no matter what you threw at him, his fan base didn't care. Joe Brandon is a Teflon Don in the sense that you can't really throw anything at him because he's so fucking boring. Like, he's such a typical bullshit by-the-book politician. Guys, I've said this so many times. He is a Delaware senator. This is America's very own tax haven, okay? Delaware the state is literally a state, is a Passover state that is there specifically to operate as a tax shelter. Okay, it's one of the many that we have. It's a corporate haven. Joe Brandon, despite being a fucking senator that has regularly advocated for deregulation of banks and, you know, defended corporate interests, literally over the course of his, like, entire lifespan long political career at the tail end of his political career didn't have enough money to pay for his son's cancer research when he was vice president he was about to put another take it out another mortgage on his fucking house did i say cancer research sorry cancer treatment bo biden had cancer Joe Biden's favorite son, okay, who was who was being positioned to become like, you know, a, an important politician and continue on the Biden legacy. He tried to fucking, uh, you know, he tried to take a mortgage out on his house and Obama's like, dude, you don't do that. Like, I, I got it. I'll cover it for you, which is hilarious. Like, he's just doing it for the love of the game, which is really fucked up. At least get the bag, idiot. So the chatter said, Democrats are such by the book, boring losers. Republicans are grasping at straws. This is verbatim what I just told you. That's why it's a perfect avenue of attack for Republicans because no Democrat is going to stick out their neck and call it like it is and be like, this is, of course, a fucking ridiculous situation where they're trying to throw someone in prison for a, a violation that, like, every American might have actually engaged in before they purchase a weapon. So that's it. It's true. But I am an advocate myself also for aggressive gun laws. So, you know, fuck it. Throw the book at them. This certainly is not just that, but the potential to be uh, a, a real impact as they head into the presidential season of 2024. This does set up the prospect of a criminal trial for the president of the United States' son, just as he is trying to make his case to Americans that he deserves another four years. The White House. This is a little bit like this angle that the media is covering is deeply frustrating for someone like myself who regularly criticizes media. There is no both sides in a situation. Like you can't talk about how devastating this is going to be for the Biden fucking campaign when his opponent has like 700 indictments right now. What do you mean? Like Hunter Biden's not on the ticket, man. What the fuck? Like, I, and I say this as someone who doesn't even think Joe Biden's prospects are all too great at the moment but it is nuts to be like yeah well you know donald trump currently has he's facing 91 charges for crimes that he directly committed alongside his co-defendants okay some state some federal and we're like oh but you know joe biden's fucking second cousin's uh third daughter he he, he got a parking ticket so what are we gonna do about that
that. It's like, come on. I sometimes despise mainstream media's like Thanos style coverage where they're like, ah, oh, perfectly equal as it should be. You know what I mean? They're sometimes so desperate to like cut a narrative that goes in either direction that they end up, I mean, not sometimes, they do it deliberately, they do it all the time, that they end up misinforming the public. That typical balance-seeking behavior is so silly sometimes, especially in this case. It's like, I don't think the average American that isn't like watching Fox News 24-7 is gonna look at the situation and go, wow, this really destroys Biden's chances. No, the average American already doesn't fucking think that Biden is a great candidate to begin with because he's 7,000 years old. That's it. They don't give a fuck about like the drama or the controversy surrounding Biden because his son is a fucking fail son, especially when they have fuck ups in their own families too, especially drug uh, addict fuck ups. Like this is America, God damn it. So don't know why this coverage exists in the way that it does. Well, it's interesting. You know, obviously as Hallie laid out, a lot of Republicans have been skeptical of David Weiss, the special counsel here and so I think a lot of people are going to be saying is this it is this all he has um, they have sort of been uh, very upset that one of the more serious felonies that he could have potentially been facing that one already expired on tax charges now there are some that are still available out there he doesn't have to necessarily bring those but he does have to bring them again within the statute of limitations this period. doesn't mean he's finished that well we just don't know and I think that's the big question again he how this motherfucker evade taxes in like every state what's happening I just don't get it how did he of like how did he not fucking pay his taxes and like what what happened here did he just like travel specifically and live in different states for six months specifically so that he could like not pay taxes there like how does that happen he can file charges anywhere within the entire united states so he could still file charges in california separate from this indictment he could always do a su superseding indictment with this if he gets new information and the grand jury decides to develop the facts more we just don't know i think but if this is all that there is you can imagine for some Republicans that have been very skeptical uh, and making a lot of noise about Hunter Biden's business dealings, this will not satisfy them given um, how cabined and how narrow the charges are here. Yeah, because they think that the DOJ is supposed to be prosecuting Hunter Biden over pedophile vampire crimes, okay? That's the problem because Fox News has been gearing the fan base into believing that that is what Hunter Biden's been doing nonstop alongside Joe Biden and that they should go to fucking jail together for crimes against humanity. Humanity. And it's like, oh God, I just, I, I don't, while I love hog watching, I don't necessarily appreciate that like a big chunk of our time that we spend on God's green earth revolves around like, unfortunately having to, to take people who are just borderline schizophrenic seriously, like their fantasies seriously, just because enough of them now believe it because they saw it on a TV channel that regularly lies. Because if enough people believe it, then it's the truth. It's no different than the truth and you have to fucking cover it and danny how strong or how serious a case is this and what would you likely expect from a defense this is a very serious uh, charge and it carries serious penalties and because the elements are really that somebody was a habitual addict of a, a stimulant or a narcotic you might expect the defense to be something on the order of well that wasn't me i wasn't that person at that time. And of course, the government will likely introduce evidence, say, from Hunter's book or other evidence that they have that maybe has been reported uh, that, in fact, he was in violation of that statute. But that subsection, the idea that somebody is an addict. Yeah, they're going to use evidence of him smoking crack with the revolver in his hand. It's, it's you know, it's that that's kind of open and shut, which, let's be clear, is very cool. Exactly. Being cool is not a crime. Okay, being cringe is not a crime, and neither is being cool. I love Bethesda Games. You guys already know. I am a bit of an unapologetic fanboy. You're fing space dust, motherfucker. Let's go. I am a, a nerd for this kind of shit specifically. I love space exploration games. Damn, dude, this is gonna be great for capitalist mining extraction. This is everything I wanted. In the words of Todd Howard, this it just works. I mean, this does actually work.